Welcome to the Great Commission Anglican Church of Beals in Virginia. I'm Pastor Jim Pratt. Today we share the Holy Communion service from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer for the first Sunday in Advent. We are conducting our Holy Communion service today at the Powell's Church located at 6415 Schoolhouse Road in Beals in Virginia. We want to thank the congregation of Powell's Church for opening their hearts and their church for our work. We are a mission church of the Episcopal Missionary Church and work with the support of Christ Church Warrington, located at 95 Green Street, Warrington, Virginia. For more information on the work of the Great Commission Anglican Church, please go to our website, historic-faith.org. You may also write us at Great Commission Anglican Church, P.O. Box 300, Bealton, Virginia, 22712. Our focus is to fulfill the Great Commission by our Lord and King, Jesus Christ, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything Jesus commanded us. We will plant churches that plant churches and make disciples that make disciples. We seek to bring the good news of the completed work of Jesus Christ to all people, focusing on those who need a special touch of God's love. The need is great and the workers are few, so we seek to partner with any Christian or any Christian congregation who has a heart for our work and for the Great Commission. Some portions of our communion service have verbal responses and prayers for the, for the congregation. We encourage you to join wherever you are as you view this video. You can obtain a digital copy of the 1928 Book of Common Prayer at justice.anglican.org or buy a hard copy from Christian booksellers such as christianbooks.com. In the midst of the COVID-19 precautions, we do have in-person services. Please contact us if you wish to join us and meet the special safety precautions that we take, or just to meet us face to face. We celebrate communion known as the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist every Sunday. The sacraments of our communion service are available to all baptized Christians who come to the Lord's Supper with a humble and repentant heart. We also look to provide communion of bread and wine through lay Eucharist ministers to those who are unable to join us in church, such as those in assisted living communities or who are locked down in their homes. This is how we celebrate our union with Jesus Christ and with each other. Finally, let's talk a little bit about Advent. Advent is a season of the liturgical year observed in many Christian churches as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for the, both the celebration of the Nativity of Jesus at Christmas and the return of Jesus Christ at the Second Coming. Advent is the beginning of the Western liturgical year. The term Advent was adopted from the Latin Adventus, which meant coming or arrival, which translated the Greek parousia which referred to the second coming of Christ. Thus, the season of Advent in the Christian calendar anticipates the coming of Christ in three different perspectives. First, the coming of Jesus Christ, born into our humanity at Bethlehem. The second is Jesus Christ coming into our hearts at the time of baptism, to be one with us and to dwell with us. And finally, the coming of Jesus Christ as the Lord and King, which will overcome all darkness and bring in a new age. In the Advent calendar, like many other Christian groups' calendars, Advent commences on the fourth Sunday before Christmas, the Sunday nearest to St. Andrew's Day, which is 30 November. Practices associated with Advent include keeping an Advent calendar, lighting an Advent wreath, praying the Advent daily devotional, erecting a Christmas tree, as well as other ways of preparing for Christmas, such as setting up Christmas decorations in the church, a custom that is sometimes done liturgically through a formal hanging of green ceremony 
just before Christmas. We invite you to watch this video and to enter into the worship with us. We pray that you will be blessed and protected in this chaotic, dark time, knowing that the light of Jesus Christ is just around the corner. Thank you very much. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, 
and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, and with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments that through the, thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to life immortal. Through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is written in Romans the 13th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. We owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this, saying namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. And that knowing at the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Thus ended the reading. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning at the 21st chapter, the first verse. 
Glory be to thee, O Lord. When they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and strike straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught to you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him upon thereon. And a great, very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please rise for the reading and the renewing of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Where? 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season of the liturgical year observed in many Christian churches as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for both the celebration of the Nativity of Jesus at Christmas and the return of Jesus at the Second Coming. Advent is the beginning of the Western liturgical church year. The term adopted from Latin, Adventus, means coming or arrival, translating the Greek parousia, which in the New Testament is a term used for the second coming of Christ. This is the season of Advent in the Christian calendar, anticipates the coming of Christ from three different perspectives. The physical nativity in Bethlehem, the coming of Christ into the heart of the believer at baptism, and the promised second coming of Jesus Christ as King. In our epistle reading in Romans, Paul points out that the Ten Commandments are summed up by the second greatest commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. The commandments of God shine as a light in the darkness of sin, revealing the nature of sin and telling us to put aside the deeds of darkness. Jesus Christ came as a light that overcomes the darkness, and through his sacrifice on the cross, makes it possible for us to overcome evil. In our epistle reading today, Paul also tells us that the time of darkness is coming to an end. He tells us to prepare by putting on the armor of light. For Advent, we symbolize the coming day by progressively lighting our Advent candles. Today, we light the first candle of our Advent wreath, This candle marks the first of four Sundays in Advent. Every week in Advent and on Christmas Eve, we will light another candle. Each candle has a special meaning. Advent is the ancient Christian tradition of spiritual preparation before we celebrate Christmas. Today we light the first candle of our Advent wreath. This candle marks the first of four Sundays in Advent. Every week in Advent, we will light another candle. Each candle has a special meaning. The first candle symbolizes hope and is called the prophet's candle. The prophets of the Old Testament especially Isaiah, waited in hope for the Messiah's arrival. The second candle represents faith and is called Bethlehem's candle. Micah had foretold that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, which is also the birthplace of King David. The third candle, the rose-colored candle, symbolizes joy and is called the shepherd's candle. To the shepherd's great joy, the angels announced that Jesus came for humble, unimportant people like them. Two, in the liturgy, the candle rose symbolizes joy. The fourth candle represents peace and is called the angel's candle. The angels announced that Jesus came to bring peace. He came to bring people close to God and to each other again. The fifth candle represents light and purity, and is called Christ's candle. On Christmas Eve, we will light the center candle, which is traditionally called the Christ candle. When Jesus returns in glory, the light will finally have been totally overcome. The darkness of sin, overcome. The night is far gone, the day is coming. Advent is a time to reflect on the fact that Jesus is coming back as King to set the world right, casting away all the works of darkness, bringing down all of the corrupt governments of man that are in opposition to the law of God. Jesus, the Son of God, who is creator God and who is without beginning or end, 
emptied himself of all power to take the form of man, of a little infant, born in a stable. Yet he did not remain a little child. No doubt the devil wishes he had stayed a child. The devil tried to kill the little child, Jesus, using Herod to order every boy in Bethlehem, two years old and younger, to be slaughtered. God the Father, however, saved his son by sending him for a time to Egypt. Jesus returned, grew, prayed, worshipped in the temple, studied, worked, sweated, was tired, was hurt, grieved, hungry, thirsty, and in all ways took part of our humanity. He resisted the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness. And when Jesus did so, he did not use his innate power as God or call on bands of angels, but rather turned to the Scripture and resisted the temptation just as we can. We also have the name of Jesus, which has power to invoke fear in the devil because Jesus has defeated the devil on the cross. And by his resurrection, baby Jesus or King Jesus? We remember baby Jesus on Christmas. But now we call upon a risen, powerful King. Our preparation for Christmas in Advent is remembering who came to save all mankind from sin and death and from ourselves. Think of the wise men who came seeking Jesus. They were not looking for a cute little baby. They prepared for a long, hard journey and were looking for the one born to be king of all the earth. Not three kings, but many wise men. We like the image of three kings coming to the baby in the major, but there were likely more than three wise men, and they were likely not kings. They were scholars who dug into the ancient prophecies, who searched the heavens for the signs of God's will. There are three gifts mentioned in Scripture, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the Bible does not say how many wise men there were. Despite all the nativity scenes put out at Christmas, they did not arrive just after Jesus was born in the stable. Jesus was likely as old as two years when they arrived. We know this because when Herod, who wanted to kill any rival king, questioned the wise men carefully, and based on their answers, ordered every child two years and younger to be killed. Also, the Scripture says that they found Jesus in a house, Let me read you the account of the Gospel of Matthew. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise! Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophets. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. One, the coming of a powerful king is to terrify those who rule without his authority. When Jesus walked this earth in his humanity, he caused fear and anger by those in authority. 
Why? Because he stood against their evil deeds. Our Gospel reading today talks about Jesus coming into Jerusalem at the end of his earthly ministry. He came in such a way as to highlight his kingship. Remember our reading said, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. This is what we celebrate on what we call Palm Sunday as the prelude to Easter week. When Jesus arrived that day on the donkey, he went to the temple and drove out those people who were turning the worship of God into a business, and a crooked business at that. Our reading said, And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you make it a den of robbers. Jesus came as a just king and brought justice to the temple. This was a small sign of big things that are to come. It is always darkest before the dawn. This is where we come to understand what Advent means for us today. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is the king of kings, is coming in power to overturn all that is crooked and perverse. When we prepare during the Advent season, we are preparing for the second coming, the end of the age, the advent of a new age. This is why Paul wrote, besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you are to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. The night is far gone, The day is at hand. We need to open our eyes to awake. We are living in dark days. While there are many wonders of creation that remain to show the glory of God, man is step by step corrupting the natural order. Our increasing understanding of natural laws gained through science is being used to create more terrible weapons and more ways to enslave other people. Mankind is now tinkering with the God-given code of life, our DNA, in order to make more money or to entertain ourselves. Violence, sexual perversion, and even the worship of the occult fill mass entertainment. Gambling and drug use are being widely legalized and promoted by government. Human trafficking, another word for slavery, has become more and more widespread. Evil abounds. But take heart. As Christians, we know that the night is darkest just before the dawn. As Paul wrote, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. Paul follows that sentence with these words. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness, and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The armor of light is the full armor of God. As we start the Advent season, we are to prepare for the coming King by putting on the armor of light. In other words, to put on the full armor of God, which Paul writes about in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. We have lit the first candle of our Advent wreath. Let us lo- that light symbolize the righteous life we are to live. Follow the commandments of God to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now we remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, 
where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by the holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name might agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. And we beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer the holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart 
and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart of this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and we will our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto Him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is neat and right so to do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior hath taught us, we are bold to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who taketh away the sins of the world. The body of our, my Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, to take this in remembrance of everlasting life.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. I drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for me, and I am thankful. The communion of the Lord is open to all baptized Christians who come with a humble and repentant heart. Special dispensation has been given in the time of COVID to receive the wine and bread in these sterile packs that will be distributed to the population now. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee, for Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have newly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also the heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please stand. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. 
O Lord God, the heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest on the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high and glory of God the Father. Amen. And now, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and this Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.